Hello, today we are going to talk about the use of CT angiography and perfusion in the evaluation and treatment of acute ischemic stroke patients, addressing both standards and potential pitfalls. My name is Edward Sloan. I work with Fern, Fern.org. I'm Professor Emeritus at the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago in Chicago, Illinois. I also am Medical Director for New Rose Healthcare Management, helping the Emergency Department at Roseland Community Hospital in Chicago, a safety net hospital. And I serve as Medical Director for the Physician Assistant Studies Program at Dominican U University in River Forest, Illinois. This information is being present, presented at the Clinical Decision Making in Emergency Medicine meeting June of this year. I want to give my thanks to Joan Esbury Cullen, Andy Godwin, Andy Jagoda, Ginia Ports, and Scott Silvers, with whom I've worked at this good meeting for several years. I have no financial conflicts. I serve as the Fern President and Board Chair. So we're now going to talk about the elements of the multimodal CT testing paradigm or diagnostic approach in patients with acute ischemic stroke. Let's start with CT angiography CTA. What are the study technicals of this test? What is the CTA study and what does it demonstrate? It provides a contrast view of both extracranial neck and posterior circulation and intracranial vessels. It goes from the aortic arch to the cranial vertex, and it provides here a superior spatial view of the cerebral vessels. How is a CTA done, and what are the time and technical requirements for performing a CTA? 50 to 75 cc's of IV contrast are provided. It is performed within seconds of the contrast injection. There is some post-processing formatting required, but there's no significant time or technical requirements for this testing. And importantly, prior serum creatinine is a consideration for those who are at risk for severe renal disease or renal failure, but most often in most patients, it is not necessary. What are the indications for CT angiography? When is a CTA study indicated in acute ischemic stroke patients? Theoretically, all patients should get a non-contrast CT and a CTA. Why? The CTA identifies clots, collaterals, and vascular variants. It can be done rapidly, it is relatively low risk, and it's technically feasible simply with the injection of the contrast. However, it is not mandated in all patients, and we'll talk more about this at the end of our lecture today. If we assume that only about 20 to 25 percent of acute ischemic stroke patients have a large vessel occlusion, then the acute diagnostic paradigm and treatment approach does not always mandate this testing. And because an LVO is more likely with an NIH stroke scale above 7 to 9, LVO is not as likely to be diagnosed via CTA in patients with a lower NIH stroke scale, although it does occur on some occasions. The point is, because there are not LVOs in all patients who present with stroke, it is not necessary that this test be done in all patients, even though it is preferred that this treatment or this diagnostic text, test be utilized. Also, we know that in low NIH stroke scale or mild strokes, that it an LVO isn't always present. In fact, most often it's not present, such that it is not always necessary to have a CTA performed in these patients. The reason I bring this up is because if you're in a center that treats patients but you do not have the ability to perform CTA, that it may still be possible to optimally treat patients with acute ischemic stroke, especially when LVOs are not likely, as in patients with low severity stroke. What about positive imaging and patient treatments in patients with CT angiograms? You see here on the left, you see a cutoff in the middle cerebral artery in the yellow circle related to a thrombus or embolus that is present in this. So this MCA large vessel occlusion 
in fact, shows you on the right in the uh, area with the yellow arrows, the presence of the clot within the MCA itself called the MCA sign. This is apparent on non-contrast CT and does not require a CT angiogram to observe this. So how does a positive CTA study change and improve AIS patient care? Well, if you can do a CTA, it may detect a large vessel occlusion in lower NIH stroke scale score patients who have mild stroke symptoms. And for sure, it will identify LVOs, especially in the more at-risk group, that it has more severe stroke with an NIH stroke scale greater than 7 to 9. It surely prompts mechanical thrombectomy and other EV therapies to be considered. We know that only approximately 7% of acute ischemic stroke patients may receive some mechanical thrombectomy for LVO patients in practice. And this suggests, again, that if you aren't able to detect it with a CTA, you still should be able to optimally care for these stroke patients. But what is most important is the ability to determine with a CTA that there is a thrombus or embolus in a large vessel. It may cause more of these AIS LVO patients to be treated aggressively for the LVO using EVT. What about stroke patient outcomes and care standards with regard to CT angiography? Has the use of CTA changed outcome in AIS patients and which patients? In this study, we demonstrate that when patients present within six hours, a protocol with CTA for all patients, this study suggests improved stroke progression, fewer complications, and improved outcomes in LVO patients. So is CTA use the standard of care and in which patients? In summary, in centers where non-contrast CT and CTA can be rapidly performed serially with the patient on the CT table, this approach clearly is optimal. The baseline creatinine may not be universally required. In fact, without significant renal risk, it probably should not be determined before the CT can be done and the CTA. With the non-contrast CT and CTA, the ability to identify an LVO and to transfer patients for EVT is often easily achieved because of the ability of these two tests done serially. But remember, CTA use, however, is not required to provide thrombolytic therapy up to 4.5 hours in acute ischemic stroke patients. Thank you for your time and learning more about optimizing the care of patients who present to the emergency department with acute ischemic stroke. You can scan this QR code to find out more about our social media links, and you can send me a question to fern.org at gmail.com or edsloanmd at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for your participation in this Fern educational effort. Have a good day.